Broncos country, what is going on? We're a little less than two weeks away from the NFL draft. That's wonderful. And going to be talking about Levi Wallace coming in here for a visit with the Broncos free agent cornerback. Before I get into it, y'all be sure to hit that like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and join us on our way to 500 subs. Smash that subscribe. So, hey, let's go ahead and get into it. Courtesy of Jordan Schultz right here saying, Free agent cornerback Levi Wallace is visiting the Broncos tomorrow, which is today. Wallace has 12 career interceptions, 54 pass breakups with the Bills and the Steelers. And this is a player that I feel like would be wonderful to sign here. Some people would say, hey, maybe you bring in Levi Wallace if you happen to trade Patrick Sertan for draft capital or to move up in the draft. I hope that's not you know, the scenario with how all this plays out because I would prefer Levi Wallace to more so be some insurance on Riley Moss and the rest of our secondary, which I think needs a little bit more of an improvement. Of course, with losing Justin Simmons at the safety position, and I mean, we still have uh, Damari Mathis. Uh, of course, Jaquan McMillan played really well last year as a slot corner. But I mean, taking a look at Levi Wallace versus some of the other guys that have been on the team or that are available as possible team signings. Let me rephrase myself. I think Levi Wallace is one of the better bargain signings that we could have right now if we're looking to still grab somebody who is under the age of 30 so of course this past year in pittsburgh didn't have that great of a year 64 or 60.4 coverage grade right now uh, nfl pass rating of 100.9 one penalty so so that's not bad out of what uh, how many snaps did he take over 700 whoops let me go back here really quick yeah, 762 snaps, only one penalty. That's great. But you see down here had uh, two interceptions, six pass breakups, allowed seven touchdowns. And, and that's something that you wouldn't want to see him repeat out here. Uh, but somebody who can play that mainly that boundary corner position doesn't really play the slot. And you can see throughout his career, he's had uh, some really good seasons. It's kind of funny. His coverage grade has kind of dropped off most years. but Saw him do a little bit better in Pittsburgh. Uh, well, depending on what you look at. I mean, gave up way less touchdowns a couple years ago, only three. But 34 pass breakups, that's what they have here on PFF as opposed to Jordan Schultz statistic 54. So I know pro football's focus, focus stats are a little bit different. But uh, overall, I mean, when you look at his career down here, let me increase the size of this so y'all can y'all can see it a little bit better. Like overall, passer rating against him has been under 100 for every reason except the past year. So uh, that's wonderful. Again, has 13 career interceptions on here, which is great. I think Pro Football or Jordan Schultz said 12. So not really sure how there's discrepancies with that statistic. But anyways, again, a guy who has played 400 snap, 4,000 snaps at boundary corner. Okay. And right now, Riley Moss, he's a total wild card. We have no idea what he's going to do this year. You hope after a redshirt year, essentially, he's going to be here ready to start. When you move up for a guy in the third round, that's got to happen. But we know we, and like other teams, miss on some of these picks sometimes. And I, I think that he would be a wonderful signing um, to pair next to somebody like Patrick Sertan, the second. And we look at our salary cap right now with allocated money for the draft and all that. I guess it's about 17, 16 million or so. But that allocation, we're already kind of at zero cap space right now. So we might need to restructure somebody or cut somebody again. I would automatically just cut somebody like Damari Mathis to bring this guy in. Uh, that be really nice you got to imagine or wonder if somebody like quinn bailey might be on the chop block uh, with us signing some other offensive linemen and yeah that's i mean if you cut him you save a million dollars if you cut damari mathis again you uh, save about eight hundred thousand dollars as well so maybe that's enough money to to get somebody like levi wallace here i think it would be a good bargain signing i want to imagine he would 
held more than you know two million dollars or so so y'all let me know what you think in the comments uh, on this particular signing when you look at the available cornerbacks again a lot of them are over the age of 30 jc jackson and jory jackson are around the same age of course as levi wallace they could be some guys that we bring in here as well but uh, levi wallace i think that that would be just a fine signing i would much rather have here than somebody like fabian moreau or kawan williams over somebody like trey and or eli apple as well so uh, y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments i wouldn't hate bringing in a guy who's in the Inner 30 is kind of like a stopgap, but I do like the signings that Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos have been doing, bringing guys in that definitely have multiple, multiple years uh, left in their career. They're under 30. They got a little bit of time. And so I kind of hope that we continue on with maybe not this youth movement, but this movement with just younger players. I wouldn't call a 28 year old player like a youthful player, but he's still got some time left. So Y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments on this. Is there anybody else in free agency that you want the Broncos uh, to go after? Uh, please, please let me know. But I'm hoping overall that that we do keep Patrick Sertan. We'll have to see what happens. I, I got to think that the odds of us actually trading up to three or four are pretty odd or pretty low with Minnesota seeming to have a better package than us. So no ditty. Anyways. Y'all hit that like, let me know your thoughts in the comments, subscribe, and as always, y'all, go Broncos.